In this video we're going to look at a basic introduction to speed time graphs or velocity time graphs. Let's start off by looking at some speed time graphs. So here we've got four different speed time graphs. We will have the time along the horizontal or the x-axis and then the speed along the vertical or the y-axis. So we can here, see here we've got speed in miles an hour and time in minutes. Speed in miles an hour and time in hours speed in millimetres per second and time in minutes, and speed in metres per second and time in minutes. I'm going to look at this one as the units are the same, and we're going to look at two of the key features of speed time graphs. The first one is that the area under the graph is the distance covered. So if I can find the area of a trapezium in this case, or the area of a triangle in this case, or the area of a rectangle, a couple of triangles in this one, and a trapezium if we like, we can find now the distance travelled. So let's go ahead and do that, and I'm going to do it with this one just here. I'm going to do it with that one as the units are nice and straightforward. So what we're going to have is now a base, we're going to have now the top, so we'll have the top, and we'll have a perpendicular height. So all I'm doing is finding the area of this trapezium. So at the top, we're going to have on here now a distance here. This distance from here to here is three units, which gives me three hours. So that is three. This one is from zero to four and a half, so that's 4.5. And this height right here, that is the speed now, that is going to be 15. So if I want the area of a trapezium, which is the distance covered, we can say now that the distance is going to be Using the air of a trapezium, 3 plus 4.5, we add the top and the bottom, we divide by 2, and we multiply it now by the perpendicular height. So that's going to give me 7.5 over 2 times by 15. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've got 7.5 divided by 2, and we're going to multiply this now by 15. If we do that, that's going to give me 56.25. So we've got 56.25, and that will be miles. So we can see that this is in miles, and because we've got hours, and we've got miles per hour. The second feature that we're going to look at is the gradient of these lines. So if I look at the gradient of this line from here to here, and then the gradient of this one from here to here, this is going to give us the acceleration. The acceleration is the change in velocity, or the change in speed, over the change in time. So we can see here we've got three different sections. We're going to be accelerating here, which means that we're going to be gaining speed. Here we have a zero acceleration as we've got a flat line. Zero acceleration means constant speed, and then we've got a deceleration as we're reducing the speed. So let's look at the gradient of this line here. We can see it's 15 over 1, so I could say the acceleration right here, and I'm going to call this A1 for the first part. So we've got three different sections, 1, 2, and 3. We can say that the acceleration of the first one is going to be 15 over 1, or we could just write 15, and we could write this now as miles an hour squared. So this is miles per hour per hour. This one right here, we can say that A2 is going to be equal to 0 and that's going to be miles an hour, an hour, miles per hour, per hour. So miles per hour squared. We can see that there's no change in the speed. The, the uh, acceleration is the change in speed over the change in time. Here we have a deceleration, as this is going to give us a negative gradient. We can see now that we have 15 and we have one half. So 15 divided by one half is going to be 30. So we can say that A3 is going to be negative, and this is going to be 30 miles an hour squared. So just writing this on. So this is a positive acceleration. The particle, or whatever it is, the car is getting quicker. This is a zero acceleration, and this is a negative acceleration, or, if you like, deceleration. So if we have a negative acceleration, it's decelerating. We're slowing down. So there are the two main features of speed time graphs. The area under the graph is the distance travelled, and the gradient of these straight lines gives us the acceleration. All of the examples we're going to look at in this particular video are going to have straight lines. So we can say that these are examples of constant acceleration.
So this is constant acceleration here, this is constant deceleration, rather than having, for example, a curve. If we had a curve that did something like this, then we wouldn't have, we'd have what we call variable acceleration. So this is constant now when we have our straight lines. So let's look at answering some questions. The graph below shows how the speed of an athlete varies during a race. So speed, meters per second, and then we got the time in seconds. What was the distance of the race? The first thing I'm going to do is check my units. We got seconds and we've got meters per second. So that's perfectly fine. All I need to do is work out the area of this trapezium. So if we look along the bottom, we've got now a distance here of 16 units, which gives me 16 seconds. If we look at the top, we've got the parallel side. We can see that that is going to go from 4 to 15, which is 11. And we have a perpendicular height from 0 to 8, and that is going to give us 8. So what we can say from here now is that the area trapped under this curve, which is the distance covered, the distance is going to be now 16 plus 11. We divide that by 2, and we multiply this now by the perpendicular height. So if we just look at this, 16 plus 11 is 27. 27 over 2 times by 8, that's going to give me now 27 multiplied by 4, which is going to give me 108, and that is going to be metres. So we write that in metres. If we're looking at metres per second and the time in seconds, then our distance is going to be 108. If you were unsure about that, what you could go ahead and do is look at setting up triangles and rectangles. So if you're not comfortable with the air of a trapezium, you can look now at a rectangle and two triangles. So if we look at this one now, we've got on here a base of 4 and a height of 8. So that's 4 times by 8, which is 32. We half the answers, it's a triangle. That would be 16. So if we were asked now um, how far the... Uh, how far the runner, I think it is an athlete, had run whilst accelerating, then we could say that they've run 16 metres. How far did they run at a constant speed? Well, we can see that this is 11, this length is 11, this one is going to be 8, so they run at a constant speed for 88 metres, and that was at 8 metres per second. This one, we've got 1 times by 8, and then we need to divide that by 2, that's going to give me 4. So this part right here uh, gives us four meters. So that's what we end up with. So if you're asked to split this up, you can do it with rectangles and triangles. We could also, we're not asked to, but we could look at the acceleration and the deceleration of the athlete. We can see that the acceleration here, eight over four, that would give us two meters per second squared. So from this point right here, for the first four seconds of the race, the athlete is going to be accelerating at 2 metres per second squared. If we look for this 11 second period in the middle, what we've got now is a 0 metres per second squared acceleration. We've got constant speed. Constant speed means 0 acceleration. We can see that flat line. We've now got deceleration and we can say that this, if we look at this, we've gone from 8 to 0 in 1 second we can say that de or the acceleration is negative 8 metres per second squared, so the deceleration would be positive 8 metres per second squared. Remember, negative acceleration is deceleration. So that's just pushing that one out slightly further. OK, let's have a look at another one. The graph below shows how the speed of a lorry varies as it sets off from a set of traffic lights. We're asked to find the distance travelled by the lorry after A, 8 seconds, B, 16 seconds, and C, 20 seconds. So we've got time in seconds, and we've got speed in metres per second. So we don't need to do any conversions. So if we look at the first one, after 8 seconds, well, that's 8 seconds, we've got a triangle. We've got a base of 8, we've got a height of 5, so we can say from this that 8 times by 5 divided by 2, so 8 times by 5, divided by 2 will give us now 20 metres. So this is 20 metres. So in the first 8 seconds, it's travelled 20 metres. If we look at the first 16 seconds, let's go ahead, that's still giving us a triangle. So we can go ahead and do that. So if we think about this, 
what we've got is the following. We've got a base of 16, a height of 10. So it's going to be 10 times by 16 divided by 2, which is going to give us now 80 meters. So that gives us 80 and this part gives us 20. So we could say from here, this point right here, 8 to 16 seconds, this must be 60. And we can, of course, go ahead and work that out using the trapezium. So we asked now on here uh, how far it's travelled after 20 seconds. What we could do is use this and just add on a rectangle. Or, if you like, you can simply use a trapezium. So if this wasn't structured in the same way, we could look at this length right here. This length is going to be 4. This length right here is going to be 20. And the perpendicular height is going to be 10. So we could say that this is 4 plus 20 divided by 2, then we're going to multiply that by the perpendicular height of 10. So on this, we're going to have, that's going to give me 12, 12 times by 10, that's going to be 120 metres. Now, if we look at this right here, if I worked out the area of this uh, triangle, right, uh, this rectangle right here, then what we'd have is a 4 by 10, that would give me 40 metres. And we know that all of this right here to this point right here is 80 80 plus for 40 gives us for 120. So depending on how this question is structured, you might want to go ahead and do that particular technique. We're not asked to look at this, but if we look at the acceleration for the first 16 seconds, we can see the change in speed is 10. So let's put this on. And if you do uh, physics, you might see A being written as dv dt, the change in velocity with respect to time. Uh, I'm not going to really introduce that here, which is essentially using the, uh, the change in speed over time, but this is, uh, this is notation that you might see. So what we can say is the acceleration is going to be 10. So we've got now on here, let's have a look, 10 over 16. So 10 over 16, which is going to give us, what's that, 5 over 8, 5 over 8, and this would be metres per second squared. So what's that, 0 0.625 metres per second squared? It's the change in y over the change in x. The gradient of that line gives us the acceleration. Let's uh, move on and we will look at another question. Hannah runs at 2 metres per second for 5 seconds and then her speed decreases to zero at a steady rate over the next 4 seconds. We're asked to find the distance that Hannah runs. We can just draw a quick sketch. So let's go ahead and draw this up. So we're going to have a speed time graph. We've got now a constant speed of 2 metres per second. So if I just go ahead and put that on, I'm going to show that. Let's just change the colour. And we will put on this colour here. So for 5 seconds, 2 metres per second squared. So I'm going to have that. And then I like to drop down a perpendicular, like so. And we can now just label this up. So if we want, we can put on here that this is going to be 5. So this is t seconds. So t seconds. And this is going to be on here. We've got v meters per second, uh, v meters per second. So on here, we've got two. We've then got uh, her speed decreases to zero at a steady rate. So this is now constant deceleration. So we can draw a straight line. If we draw a straight line, what we're going to have now is the following. Remember, this is over the next four seconds. So what we need to do is go to this point right here. And this point is going to be nine. So if we look at that, that is going to be 9. So we're asked to work out the distance that Hannah runs. We can do this with a rectangle and a triangle or a trapezium. So with the trapezium, the bottom is 9, the top is 5, we divide by 2, and we multiply it now by the perpendicular height, which is going to be 2. So that's going to give us, in total now, we're going to have on here 14, that's going to be 14 metres. So that's what we get, 14 metres in total. I wouldn't quite call it running, um, but walking, I mean, that's in nine seconds, 14 metres is not uh, breathtaking. But that's, we can see it's just the area now trapped under the curve. We have the top and the bottom, or trapped under the, the two lines, I should say. Alternatively, what you could have done is just done this one, five times by two, which is going to give us 10 metres covered. And then this one right here is going to be Four, we've got a base of four, we've got a height of two, four times by two divided by two, which of course is going to give us four metres. Adding the two together and we have the distance that she's covered. Here we can see now that we have a zero acceleration, so zero metres per second squared. 
If we look at this one now, we've got a change in the velocity over the change in time. So this one, we can say now that the acceleration is going to be negative 2 over 4. So negative 2 over 4, so that's going to give me now negative 1 half, and that will be meters per second squared. So we can say the acceleration is negative 1 half, the deceleration is going to be positive 1 half. So that gives us that. We're not asked for it, but I think it's interesting nonetheless. Right. Okay, let's have a look at this one. This one uh, looks slightly more challenging. The total distance travelled is 600 metres. We're asked to find V. Right, so let's look at this. What we can do is use the area under the, the graph. We know the area under the graph is the distance travelled, and that's 600 metres. So if I just set up a trapezium now, let's go ahead and do that. So slightly more challenging on this one. What we've got is something that looks like this. Let's just draw that. It doesn't have to be immaculate. If we look now, we've got a base of 40. We've got now the top here, the, the parallel, two parallel sides here. This is going to be 10. We know that this area right here is going to give us 600 metres. And we have this perpendicular height. Perpendicular height is going to be V. So let's go ahead and work that out. So what we've got then is V. So we can say now on here that 40 plus 10 divided by 2 multiplied by the perpendicular height of V is going to give us 600. So if we look at that, that's going to give me now 50, 50 over 2, so that's 25. Uh, 50 over 2, 25 V is going to be equal to 600. And then all we need to do from here is simply do 600 divided by 25. So 600 divided by 25 should give us now 24. So let's write this on. We can say that V is going to be 24. So that's going to be now 24, and that is meters per second. So that's our value of V. And if we just put that on, let's go ahead and do that. So this is 24. So 24, and if we look at this now, this is going to be meters per second. We're asked to find the acceleration in the first 10 seconds. So if we look now, this is the first 10 seconds. We're looking for the gradient of a line. So we can say now the change in the velocity is 24. The change in time is 10. So we'd say this is 24 divided by 10, which is going to give me 2.4. And that is going to be meters per second squared. We're working in meters and we're working in seconds. So the units will be meters per second squared. We're asked to find the distance travelled in the first 10 seconds. So all we're going to do now is for 24, so let's do that, 24 multiplied by 10 divided by 2. So we multiply the base and height, so that's the base, this is the height, so that's going to give me 120 metres. We're asked for the deceleration in the last 20 seconds. So if we look now, we've got 24. And we've got now a, dist a time here of 20 seconds. So this is going to be now, and I'll write this out, the acceleration, and I'll write it as acceleration, is going to be equal to negative 24 over, we're going from 24 to 0 over 20. So we can write the acceleration. We can divide both of these by, what's that, by 4, and that's going to be minus 6 over 5. So we can say the acceleration is going to be equal to negative 1.2 metres per second squared. Therefore, the deceleration is positive 1.2 metres per second squared. On the next one, we need to now find the average speed for the whole journey. All we need for that is the distance covered, which is 600 metres, and the time, which is 40 seconds. So we can say now the average speed, so average speed is going to be the 600 metres, that's how far we've gone, divided by 40, which is going to give us now 15 metres per second. So 15 metres per second is the average speed. So that's what we, we end up with just here. Uh, so there we go, 24, once we know that's 24, we can go and solve from there. So there we go, that's a brief introduction to speed time graphs or velocity time graphs. The area under the graph is the distance covered and the gradient of the lines gives us the acceleration or as we've seen in this case, the deceleration.